Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio here at the Digital Barn in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. But we're at a new location. We now shoot in two locations. Yes, we uh, San Francisco Bay Area and here in Prescott, Arizona. So, uh, but you can't tell because we're in front of a green screen. Yeah, it all looks the same. Doesn't matter, right? So, Mark's going to show us some amazing things you can do with text and motion. Uh, amazing, yes, <laughs> absolutely amazing. We'll Ab- be, yeah, it stupendous. Will, it will stun and amaze you. Specifically, uh, randomizing text. Okay, frequently you want to do some text animation where you have the individual characters change, like like you're breaking a code or something. You know, the, the NSA is big in the news right now and all this sort of breaking code. So I thought I'd do something around kind of code breaking yeah, in motion. Yeah, decryption, all these changing yeah, uh, exactly, glyphs. Exactly. I love the word glyph. Glyphs is yeah. fantastic. So motion has a bunch of behaviors for animating text, but none of them will do this specific thing. So that's why I thought it'd be useful to show how, how to do it. Can't wait. So instead of working on this just plain black standard motion, background. I did throw in some background stuff. So what I did is I, I took a little square, uh, like this little white square, and I made a replicator out of it. And I'm not going to get into detail on that here. It's very 70s. You, yeah, really kind of 70s, little blinky light kind of thing uh, for a background. And then I added on top a little uh, rectangle with lower opacity for to hold the text. Okay, just so we have a little background there. So that's what that background group is for. So to start off, I'm just going to, I created a group called text. I don't have to do that, but it's helpful. I'm going to hit T for the text tool. And I'm going to type in here, random text. Hit escape. Uh, And then instead of using the heads-up display, which F7 will toggle on and off, I'm going straight to the inspector, okay? So I'm in the inspector. I'm in the format section of the text inspector here. And let's just make this text quite a bit bigger. And I'm just going to sort of roughly size it in here where I want it. So um, the way I'm going to animate this is is this, and I should a little bit of background. If we go to the library and we go to behaviors, there are a bunch of um, text behaviors, text animation behaviors called text sequence behaviors. And you can see there's six folders. In fact, let's look at those in list view. If we pop any one of those open, we've got like all these different things, right? All these different ways of animating text. So we could take one like, uh, I don't know, rotate in and drop it on the text and play it, and we immediately get a nice little animation. It looks like it's rotating off its Y axis there. Yeah, in that particular case. So there's a million of these. They're great. They're really useful. The thing is, they are all um, canned. Well, they're very. They're not. They're canned, but they're completely manipulatable. I mean, you can change other things. What I was going to say is, they're kind of like. Uh, Lord of the Rings. There's actually one ring that rules them all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one behavior. That yeah. There's the one behavior that rules all these. They've all been built out of the one behavior. So if we go to the one ring that rules them all, it's actually in the text animation category. It's in a separate category, believe it or not. So you're saying that all those text uh, behaviors that we just saw were kind of based on this one behavior yes, you're going to show yes. us. Yes. All the ones down here in this text sequence category, all these folders are all built off of this guy called sequence text. Uh, We have talked about this before, but I'm going to use it in a little bit of a unique way. So I'm going to take this guy and drag it onto random text. Okay, so this is the one ring to rule them all. Now, by default, it lasts for the duration of the entire text layer, which plays the whole thing, which I don't want. I'm I'm going to move the playhead towards the ends. I've got a little range here. I'm going to press O for an out point. And if we play, not a darn thing happens, okay? Because by default, this doesn't do anything. It's not very exciting you at first. You have to change a position or something. Yeah, you need to choose a parameter that you want to animate. Right. And you can see it's actually got a, um, a special tool here where you can make changes directly in the viewer. For instance, if I want an animated position, you mentioned position, if I drag this up, uh, and then play immediately. Each letter will drop in. Like, you had to just change one one character. Yeah, that was one it. character. That's the whole idea about sequence text behavior. It sequences the animation through it, through the whole uh, line of text. I'm going to undo that. That was like a text move tool or something, wasn't it? Uh, this is called the um, adjust item tool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, specifically, I was, yeah. Thought I'd throw uh, that out there. <laughs> so, but check it out. If I go to the inspector and I mm-hmm. go to the behaviors tab, here we see sequence text. Okay, and it automatically added this position parameter to animate because I dragged that. So I'm going to actually get it rid of that. I'm going to remove format position, and that goes away. So right now, nothing. If I pl- if I scrub through, nothing's animated. Okay. So let's close controls because we don't interested in that right now. Right now, we want to choose what parameter to animate. Okay. Like what is it I want to animate? We did position, not what I'm interested in. If you click the add pop-up menu, you can see there's all these categories of parameters to animate: format, 
face, outline, glow, drop shadow. These are basically all the characteristics that text has, right? And there's a huge number of things you can animate. What I'm interested in here, and this is really the kernel of this whole little tip here, is this thing called character offset. Interesting. Okay, that's the thing that we're interested in here. So if I choose character offset, you can see it gets added as a, as a parameter to animate, and by default it says zero. So what this means is that um, as you increase this value, and in fact we're not going to see a change because by default it won't do anything until the end of the sequence text So it behavior. takes place over the duration. Yeah, of it. but if I drag this up, and then you kind of have to move the mouse to see it update. There we go. Um, like right now, 35 means every character is offset 35 characters. Let me get a little In the more. alphabet, I guess? Yeah, in the alphabet. So okay. if I were to set that for a one, uh, and move the mouse just to make it update. So now this said random text, so after R is S, right? For the mm -hmm. R turned into S, right. the A turned into a B, the N turned into an O, so it shifted every letter over one. Interesting. Okay, and you can choose how many, uh, how many letters it offsets. It doesn't really matter, it depends on the look you're going for. I'm just gonna put it in some around 50. So um, there I've got some totally random text, okay? But check it out, if I play it now, it'll animate back to its original Yes, it's very it's like safer. Now, a, a little bit of a problem here. In fact, let's let's pop open controls for a minute. Um, notice it's sequencing from, which is what I wanted to do in this. I wanted to start with mixed up text, and I wanted it to play and end up with my actual well, words. You might want to start with it saying something and mix it up. Yeah, you could do the opposite. So you could directions could be backwards. Okay. So in that case, you start. Um, I'm sorry, backwards actually just animates it to to move backwards. Um, that's not how you would do that. The, the direction chooses the direction of the animation. So for instance, if we do center to ends and we start it now, the animation will start in the middle and move out to the ends as it, as it gets rid of it. You're talking about sequencing the from and the to. Yes, yes, the sequence of the animation. But notice as it's playing how the, all the letters are kind of jumping around, they're yes. like popping out, yes. and they're all popping to the right. The one on the left stays still and all the ones to the right move, move around. And the reason for that is if we go back to the text inspector, the alignment is set to left aligned, okay? So for instance, if I set it to center aligned and then kind of drag the whole thing over here, um, uh, I shouldn't have done that because what's, what's happening here is my undo is not working. <laughs> Why not? Uh, sometimes undo gets a little unhappy. So I'm just gonna go take position out of here, format, position, and get rid of that. Uh, I'll bring it right back. So my point is now the middle is staying still, but the other ends are moving, okay? Yes. But in either case, I'm gonna hit Shift Z, just go back to my regular tool, and um, then I'm gonna drag this back over. What happened was it basically created animation when I dragged it. Okay, I understand okay? that, but just to be clear, I'll just clarify for the audience here, is uh, you had that first glyph, that first character moving, and you didn't want it, so you shifted it so the center was moving, so the, the ends wouldn't be shifting, is correct? <laughs> I was demonstrating that the reason it's moving is based on the alignment of the text. Right. Now I'm going to fix it completely because now all I did is it's it's centered the mid, this, the middle is not moving but the ends are moving. It still looks kind of bad because look, the whole yeah, thing look weird. The whole thing's yeah. bouncing, right? The uh -huh. whole thing's bouncing. So here's what you can do. This is really cool. So if we go to the text inspector to the format, um, we actually have collections of fonts. Okay, and where this collection comes from is actually from Fontbook. So if I launch Fontbook, which is the application for managing fonts in OS X, uh, you can see there's collections in here of fonts. There's classic fonts. Uh, I have some, I've created my own collections here, fun fonts. You'll have some built-in ones, modern, web fonts. So anything that's in Fontbook shows up here in Motion as a collection. So check this out. One of the collections is fixed width. Okay, so what fixed width means, I'll choose fixed width, and I've got a long list of fixed width fonts. I'm just gonna choose this one here called Leather Gothic, Letter Gothic Standard. So if I play that one, there's no bouncing at all. Ah. Okay, so each text, each glyph occupies a fixed amount of width. So as the letters are changing, they're not changing how much width they take up. So you're not getting that bouncing effect. No, I think this is huge because uh, a lot. I wouldn't even have thought that the fixed width was what's causing that kind of jumping. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's. It, it, it happens in a lot of, a lot of different animations, but especially where the letters are changing, that's what's going to cause a problem. So, I guess the two tips in here are character offset is the key parameter to use, and then by using fixed width, you can uh, 
stop them from jumping around. Well, uh, that brings up another question. How do you know which glyphs or characters or fonts are fixed with fonts? Well, that's the purpose of selecting the collection. Fontbook already knows. Ah, see, yeah, that so wasn't clear to me. That's okay, so, good. so Fontbook, autom this, this collection is there automatically. I didn't create it. That's there automatically. So all you need to do is set the collection to fit with, fixed width, and then under the list of fonts, all of these fonts are fixed with fonts. Ah, okay? I like the digital one, although it's kind of... So I could try this digital yeah. one. Some of these are fonts that I've purchased or installed or downloaded, right. but all of them are fixed with fonts. So even this one here is another cool one uh, that you won't find in your own system unless you go download it. Download it. Um, but uh, if you choose from that list, you know you're going to be safe, right. which is really cool. So the only thing I want to mention here is, is while we're looking at this, if we go back to the behaviors, um, there are a lot of other controls here in this control section that affect how the animation looks. And in particular, I want to point out the spread. The spread is one right now. And let's set it back to going from forward. So it'll start um, from the left and move across. Notice how each letter goes individually as it's changing, mm -hmm. as it goes through. But if you didn't want to do that, you could increase the spread and you'd get more of them changing at a time. Okay, so now you see more of them changing. If I crank that way up, they basically look like they're all changing at the same time. Right. So you can really change how the animation unfolds. If I put the spread at zero, you get one letter just chunk, 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 goes through and changes. Uh, and there's several other things in here you can play with, but the biggest one is going to be the spread and then the, the, from, uh, the sequencing, from, through, inverted. You can really change how the animation looks. Um, unit size, the reason this is useful is right now, there's a little pause when it gets to the space because it's actually applying the animation to the space. Right. But you can get rid of that by choosing uh, characters without spaces. Okay. So if we put the units, the spread deck down to one, you'll see now as soon as it gets done here, it, it jumps, jumps right across right to the next space. one. Yeah. Okay. So a couple ideas. The main idea being character offset is the key parameter to use with the sequence text behavior. And then by using a fixed width font, you can get a nice smooth animation going on. Excellent. So uh, you have or working on, or it's already available, we're not sure because of the order we put out these Mac breaks, yeah. an awesome uh, mastering text in motion tutorial. It, it should be available right now. Mastering, mastering text in motion goes through this as well as a, a ton of different, because text in motion is outstanding. And it is. so I have a very in-depth tutorial that covers all the different ways you can work with text in motion. Excellent. So you want to check that out and uh, watch us on our next MacBreak Studio. Thanks for watching.